Would you be surprised if I told you that there were Jewish members of the Ku Klux Klan? New York Times, state Klan leader hides secret of Jewish origin. And these are just some highlights from the article. It says a 21 year old Queens man, Daniel Burroughs, was identified on October 20th as the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan in charge of New York State at hearings of the House Committee on Un-American Activities. Actually, Mr. Burroughs carries a Klan card identifying him as King Klegel or Chief Organizer for the United Klans of America. So this tells you that he was in a prominent position within the KKK. For the United Clans of America here, he said he was appointed to that post about seven weeks ago. He brings to the position a varied background and extreme right wing activities. Burroughs, known as a floater among such groups, recently changed his dress from a brown shirt to a white sheet. Let me say that again. Recently changed his dress from a brown shirt to a white sheet. He now carries in a plastic window of his wallet, a card identifying him as a special agent of the invisible empire of the Klan. As former national secretary of the American Nazi party, he was second in command. He has continued to detail his doctrine. Israel is one of the grottoes from which the octopus of international jury reaches out its nefarious tentacles, Israel must perish, his tabloid. The free American promotes genocide as the best means of dealing with the Negroes and the Jewish problem. We must make the world safe for blonde hair, blue eyed children. The blonde hair, blue eyed extremist declares they must be kept safe from any taint of non-white blood, he says. There is one deep secret of Burroughs' background that he desperately does not want to be known because it threatens his whole career. The man, the United Clans of America, have chosen to lead their anti-Jewish, anti-Negro crusade here after clearance by an extensive investigation by the KBI, in other words, the Klan Bureau of Investigation, has a Jewish background. So this leader within the KKK has a Jewish background. His parents were married in a Jewish wedding ceremony. He was described as a star pupil in a Hebrew school at a Queens synagogue. He was later bar mitzvahed and it's confirmed. After information was received from a Jewish agency that Burroughs' parents were Jewish, his life was minutely traced through many sources. This is the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, Jews and Blackface, a complicated history. February 6, 2019. It says, when it comes to the Jewish experience with Blackface, the picture is, well, not so black and white. It goes on to say, for Jews, the controversy surrounding Virginia Governor Ralph Northam suggests a complicated history that runs from Al Johnson or Jolson, excuse me, to Eddie Cantor to former Brooklyn Assemblyman Dodd Hikon. Northam's political career is foundering because I think it should have been floundering. But anyway, because his 1984 
medical school year page featured a photograph of two white people, one in blackface, the other in a KKK costume. He denies being in the photo or even knowing it was on his page, but admits he darkened his skin to look like Michael Jackson. Come on, family. For a 1984 talent show. Come on, family. Northam is walking in the footsteps of Al Jolson, born Asa Jolson in Lithuania, to Jewish parents who immigrated to the United States. The actor-singer, known at the height of his popularity as the world's greatest entertainer, often performed blackface. This is Al Jolson right here. Performing Mammy. You can look it up. This is him in blackface. This is a Jewish guy in blackface. Going back to this article. Jolson's career flourished as a result of his portrayal of African-Americans, most notably in the 1927 film, The Jazz Singer. The first full length talkie, in other words, talking film, you know, audio, right? Whose hallmark moment is his emotional singing on bended knee and blackface and overdrawn white lips of Mammy. At the time, Jolson was arguably better known in the country than any genuinely black performer. The current debate over the propriety of non-black impersonating blacks, especially through wary makeup on their faces, whether accompanied by stereotype, black language and mannerism or not, is focusing attention on the history of blackface. The debate exists at the intersection of cultural affinity and cultural appropriation and the practice changing perceptions in part of both black and white society. Blackface has a long Jewish history. Let me make this clear. This is coming from a Jewish publication, the Telegraphic Agency, making it clear that blackface has a long Jewish history. Let me say it one more time. Blackface has a long Jewish history. The practice originated in the late 1820s with white male performers portraying African American characters by applying burnt cork to their faces. These minstrel acts grew in popularity through the 1840s, frequently exposing white audiences in the North to a depiction of Southern Black life. Mark Twain and Abraham Lincoln were known to attend minstrel shows. White and black performers, let me say this again, white and black performers, including Burt Williams, the most prominent black entertainer of the vaudeville era, it goes on to say, darken their faces in this way. Blackface became a staple of vaudeville and of ads for such producers as cigarettes, pancakes then came the jazz singer which took black blackface to a wider national audience in addition to jolson leading jewish entertainers who also performed in blackface included such prominent names as eddie cantor george burns george jessel and sophia tucker jews played a dis proportionate role in the entertainment industry. Wait a minute, what do we just see here? This is from the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. It says the Jews then played a disproportionate role in the entertainment industry. In other words, they had a major influence. Sounds familiar, right? I mean, anti-Semitic statements are never good for anybody, right? It's kind of like being anti-black. But you know, it's really interesting. I didn't realize that I could be considered anti-Semitic till I read one of the definitions of anti-Semitism. Look at this. The definition says, making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, 
or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as a collective, such as especially, but not exclusively. This sounds like a, I'm gonna let it go by. What was that? All right, so it says, think about it, that sounds like the type wording that's in the contracts, right? Indeed. Okay, it says, such as especially, but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. But isn't that what you said? That Jews run everything? Yeah, but that actually is considered to be anti-Semitic. Right. So I didn't realize that it was anti-Semitic to say, hey, you know, yeah. I have a Jewish attorney. I have a Jewish <laughs> record label. I have a Jewish contractor. I have a Do you Jewish... regret your statements? Are they statements you think you should be walking back? I mean, what, considering... What do you mean walking back? Well, you know, backing up off of them. I mean, the thing is, you've, you've lost a lot of endorsements. People are dropping you. You're getting, you know, vilified. You know, I mean, you might think you're right, but I think, you know, there's a lot, there's a whole world out there that's condemning you for, for what you said. Okay, so this right here is a chart of uh, Universal Studios, 20th, 20th Century Fox, ABC News, CBS, CBS News, Columbia Pictures... Uh, Warner Brothers, ESPN Sports, Fox News, Washington Post, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, MTV Music Television, Nickelodeon, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Comedy Central, NBC Entertainment, um, uh, Google, uh, what else do we have? Disney, ABC Kids and Family, YouTube, Los Angeles Times, Discovery Network, Paramount Pictures, Facebook, Huffington Post, Yahoo, Marvel, Hulu, Cosmopolitan, Time, um, Touchstone, Associated Press, uh, Pixar, Miramax, HBO, New York Post, Lucas Arts, MSNBC, uh, DreamWorks Animation. Now, the thing is, I skipped over maybe about five of them because it was just unclear on this list. The red are the executives that are Jewish at these companies. Do you think they stuck together when they heard what you said? Was that was that the so what happened? Do you think they stuck together when they heard what you said? Was that was that the So what happened? Do you think they stuck together when they heard what you said? Was that was that the So what happened? Jews performed this kind of minstrelsy in the 1910s, in the 1920s better and more than any other group in America. Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, fam. Doesn't it sound familiar? Why does it seem like Everything that was against our people, they excelled in it. Took it to another level, according to the sources that we share. Again, this is the Jewish Telegraph Agency says that Jews performed this kind of minstrelsy in the 1910s and the 1920s better and and more than any other group in America. What's your name? Who's going on now? What's your name? I'm, I'm, uh. What's your name? Not, not. What's your name? Not, topo. What's your name? Oh, man. What's your name? Ning, I'm, I'm, What's your name? Ning, I'm, I'm, What's your name? Ning, I'm, 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 What's your name? What's your name? Ning, I'm, 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 I'
By the time you get to the 18th and 20th centuries, when so many Jews have assimilated, they are in culture, they are in arts, they're in science, it's no longer against them for their religion, it's against them for their race. Because anti-Semitism is the oldest hate in the world and the hate that mutates. You said it's a hate that mutates. Correct. So your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change. Is that correct? It's not just my belief. It is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10, explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13, Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.